All right, guys. Uh, let's recap real quick. Uh, South Alabama. Then we got to look ahead to uh, New Mexico State. Uh, when you go back and you, you look at the film and man, you see so many opportunities we had during the uh, South Alabama game. Uh, and you go back and you say, well, you know, as a staff, you know, you're trying to say, well, why didn't we do better offensively or defensively? Well, when you go back and you look offensively, we had some untimely penalties that really set us back uh, on some third and longs, first and longs, second and longs, got behind the sticks. Uh, and then, you know, finding out that uh, Jesse was going to play on Tuesday, Grant had tried to push through it all week because he wanted to really play. And when he didn't get any better on Tuesday at practice, uh, he informed the trainers he was still having some symptoms, and so they decided to hold him out. Well, in comes our third team left guard, and, and give Jesse Freeman all the credit in the world. I thought the kid tried really hard. Um, I thought on a lot of plays, he held his own against number 78, a really good D lineman. Uh, but you could tell first game jitters had three penalties uh, that sort of set us back. But I thought the kid gave a great effort and showed that he can be a, a quality lineman down the road. And then in, in the passing game, well, I think we had four, four big drops, two on long balls where we're wide open with chances to score by guys that typically don't, don't drop balls. I thought Brooks threw the ball really well. When you add the 270 odd yards he had, you add four more completions to his total, he probably had 370 because two are really long drops that he put right on the money. So it gets down to penalties and execution. But when, uh, when we had to, we found a way to get back into the game and then defensively, uh, another solid performance where they get the pick six and put the team up. Now we got momentum. But you go back and look at some of the defensive things, the main glaring thing defensively, I thought we was in position most of the night. Uh, I thought our corners, Poor battled, made some great plays on the perimeter, but uh, just missed tackles. We were going for a lot of, a lot of strips, and you can see the strip attempts over and over. I bet we had 50 strip attempts, but we probably had almost that many missed tackles. And so, obviously, we want to get those strip attempts. And I'm really on the defense about trying to create turnovers. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, first we've got to tackle first, and then hope that those turno turnovers can come second. Right now. We're turning the ball over the second fewest times of any team in the conference. We're taking care of the ball uh, with, I think we're only averaging one a game or less. We're averaging less than one a game. And that's, that's outstanding. That would probably be in the top 20 in the country. But unfortunately, uh, defensively, we're not causing any turnovers. To, to put it in context, Arkansas State has turned it over twice as many times as we have, more than twice, but they're plus six because they've caused 27 turnovers, we've caused nine. So they've turned it over twice as many times as us, and they're still plus six, where we're minus six. So we're taking care of the ball, not getting any balls out, but we did get the critical interception that we returned for a touchdown because Darzell Washington, boy, had a big hit on the quarterback, forced the throw, made the ball flutter, and, and Savion Brown is just, the guy's gonna be a really good player for the next year and a half for, for the Raging Cajuns. This guy's gonna be a special player and uh, he continues to improve. I thought Troy McCullum played really well on the edge too. And uh, if we'd have tackled a little bit better, we'd have been even in better shape. But you know, some of the points that the defense gave up, I put on the offense on the late interception where he returned it down to the 10 yard line or so, 16 yard line. Uh, so if you, you take away that right there defensively, what we gave up and then the defense scored six for the offense, pretty, pretty solid day for the, for the defense. Kicking game. Uh, you know, if there's a silver lining right now, the kicking game continues to be strong. Steven Coots had another solid performance, uh, did a great job. Our punt return team is ranked fourth and now it's moved up to fourth in the conference with a couple of big, big returns for Eli and Gary. So we've seen a lot of production from the punt return team and kickoff team has just been, been lights out. So I've been really proud of their efforts. You know, right now, we're not playing as well as we would like, you know, but when you look at the film and you see some unbelievable great efforts, what we call relentless effort, you, you've got a chance to, to be a good football team. We'll get better at some of the things that these young kids are, are lacking, whether it's fundamentals, whether it's tackling, whether it's throwing, catching, we'll get better at those things when you have a team that gives you great effort. And that's what they're doing every game. And you can see the way we battled back again after half, took the lead with six minutes to go. And if we could have got a couple of first downs on that last drive, maybe, uh, you know, used up most of that clock. And then even if punted away, if we'd have 
moved it out a little bit and made them go the distance uh, for the game-winning score. So um, I thought uh, our kids played hard. A lot of bright spots, but also some things that you can't do if you expect to win football games on the road with a short week. You can't do some of the things that we did. But nevertheless, we are, you know, talking to our team. You know, every week we know what's in front of us. We know what we, we've got to do in order to, to correct things. They see these things on film, so it's not a secret to them. They see the things, and, it's, you know, that's what's so disappointing because you can see a, a catch right here that would ch change the game. You can see uh, uh, if we keep our hands on a pick right here, we change the game. You know, so there's a lot of opportunities to do that just not not getting it done, bad timing, and just um, just not getting a lot of breaks and not making a lot of breaks for ourselves either. But we still got uh, what we call three plus games left, and we control the plus one with how we play in the next three. And uh, we've got to get two two games to be bowl eligible. But our you know to get to get uh, or you know we want to win each one of them. But for to make that happen, you got to win the first one, and that's going to be this week with an opportunity against New Mexico State, a team that, to be honest with you right now, is much improved. Chuck Martin's done a great job there. Uh, they've, they've won two in a row just a couple weeks back. Got that monkey off their back, got a little momentum. They're playing much better. They've got an outstanding running back. And uh, defensively, they play hard. Uh, you, you can see why they're a much improved team. And so, uh, but coming back home is gonna be a huge plus. We got our last two out of three at home and uh, we'll play really good at Cajun Field. So our kids are really focused on, on this game. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of the way our kids are, are, are still continuing to prepare um, because they know still we've got an opportunity. And if we, if we finish the way we want to finish, we can still finish with eight wins. That's what's so, you know, it's, it's an opportunity that we've got. So we've still got a chance to finish this season out on a huge positive note. And of course, for us, there's a lot of football left to be played. And so this team is fighting. And I told our team, we're not gonna be measured on this pass game. They're gonna be measured on how we respond and play this game. And that's the, the thing I challenged them with. So with that, we'll open up and talk about e either game. Oh, abs yeah, the last question about that, you know, that's the thing that even you know, the, the receiver that saw it on film is just when you run a hook route, you got to come back for the ball. You come back for the ball, it's probably first and ten, uh, raging Cajuns. And when you don't come back for the ball, and that's something that, uh, that uh, Gabe does a million times in a row. He's been one of our most consistent wide receivers this year. And, but that wasn't the, the, you know, one play doesn't affect, doesn't change uh, the game. There's a, there were a lot of plays. But that's one, obviously, we'd have loved to have back. Um, and then what was your other question? Oh, yeah, Brooks. I thought Brooks uh, at times really played well. Uh, he showed some playmaking ability when he scrambled, found Jamal down the sideline. That's the type of playmaker uh, that we, we need at quarterback. And I thought that was a huge step forward for him to have the confidence to uh, extend the play, find a receiver, and take a shot. And uh, – and try to get the ball to some of our playmakers. And that's sort of what we've been missing this year at the quarterback position. Not, not just cookie cutter, drop back, go through progression and throw it or hand the ball off. That, that's, there's a lot of quarterbacks in the country and do that. If you look at the great teams, they've got quarterbacks that extend plays, uh, get the ball to their playmakers, make some things happen on their own, create, and uh, that's what he did on that play. And he showed he's got the ability to do that. But I thought he threw the deep ball as well as he's thrown all year. Uh, if he'd have got those other four balls caught, he would have had an unbelievable night, and the and this outcome probably would have been been different. And so, I thought he played played really well. Well, that's that's a fine line, but uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna continue tackling at practice, continue hitting, even, even though we're thin. You've got to you've got to tackle in order to tackle in, in games, and uh, but uh, you know the. The key to, to tackling is getting more people to the ball. And um, the more people you get to the football, the easier it is to tackle. 
Um, it's called, you know, one guy don't tackle him, at least he's holding him up to the, to the, to the rest of the posse gets there. And so that's the key is getting a lot of people to the ball. And, uh, but you can see on film, most of the missed tackles were because players were going for the strip attempt and not for the tackle. And uh, they were really trying to get, get across what I challenged them to do was to create turnovers. But in, at the end, uh, we, we took it out of context and we're not going for the tackle, we're going for the strip or trying to punch the ball out and give South Alabama credit. They did a great job taking care of the football. Well, you know, Taboris Lee right now is by far our most productive D lineman. Not only, and we, we called him out in our team meeting yesterday on our punt save team, he held up the center the whole way, did his job. On uh, punt blo uh, field goal block, he's splitting the A gap, almost gets a block every time. The guy is all in. The guy only has one speed. And if some other guys would play at that type of speed, we could really be outstanding because he's, he is a difference maker right now, and uh, he's doing it by willpower. He's just willing himself to make tackles. Um, outstanding player. Boy, I'm glad we got, got him for the future because he's going to be a really good player uh, moving forward. You guys have made a decision on Simeon Muhammad? Yes, right now we're not planning on playing him. Yep. We're, we're planning on redshirting him so he'll have two more years. No, because, you know, here's the thing. Where, where do you put him? You know, where, where do you play him? You know, do you, we might could play him at safety, but uh, who, do you, who do you put on the bench? Simeon? I mean, you put uh, uh, Savion. It'd be hard to take him off the field. Troy McCullum, it'd be hard to take him off the field. Here's a guy that hadn't played all year long who's probably rusty as a, as a barn nail. And uh, you got two guys that uh, have been playing 70 snaps a game. So I don't know where he would fit right now. Not to say he's not going to be a great player for us. And we're going to put our best four on the field in the, in the future. And he will factor into our defense in a big way. But those other two kids have earned their stripes and have shown that they, they're going to – our secondary right now in the corner positions have really lived up to my expectations these last six weeks. You know what? You know, a lot of times the boundary corner gets all the action. And, boy, I'll tell you, they, they came after him all night long kept coming up with some big plays and um, just give him credit. Even if he do make a play, he puts it behind him and plays the next play, and that's the sign of a great player. You don't worry about the play that just happened. Play the next play. And uh, that, that guy is just getting better by leaps and bounds. Well, one is, you know, it'd be nice to have them there. You know, Tracy didn't get to make the trip. Tracy Walker, starting safety, didn't make the trip. And um, we just, you know, all year long have played musical chairs in the secondary, especially at the safety position. And Dom Jones has swung from the nickel to the corner to the safety. And give that kid credit. Boy, I'm glad we've got him on our team because without him, I don't know where we'd be because he's the only guy that can, can play all three and, and can get you out of a game. It's tough when you can't just settle down into, into a position with the same guys. And, uh, you know, we've got some Travis Crawford until this year. It's not played an awful lot. He's a guy that's given you a great effort, but just still a young, inexperienced uh, sophomore. Um, and then Dom Jones, you know, is, uh, uh, who's been, you know, somewhat of a career backup, has played a lot, but he's never had a chance. It's not hadn't been fair to him because we move him every week. and. He got moved to safety last week when we found out Tracy wasn't going to be able to play. And so that's why the corner position has been so much better than the safety position because of just uh, moving people around and, and people just not getting to just settle in and get better at that position. No, we'll get, you know, we'll get Worthy back and, and, uh, and um, Tracy back also. But right now, TJ is not playing – probably at the level we need him to play back there at the safety position. You know, he's 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 doing some good things but just gotta be a little more a little more consistent. Well, you know, when I th when I see a missed opportunity, I see a, a deep ball Gabe's wide open behind the corner, you know, there or two balls. And the one they challenged, I really didn't think they'd overturn it. The second ball that we dropped, uh, I really thought that he got underneath it from, from the viewpoint. I didn't think they had enough evidence to overturn it. 
I didn't see it on the TV copy like you guys may have saw it, but from, from the from the copy or I saw, I didn't know if they would overturn it. But, you know, you miss an opportunity right there to score on a deep pass. Um, th those are big opportunities. You miss an opportunity in the red zone to score. We get down to the 19-yard line. We have a false start that backs us up to the 24. Then we take a sack for minus 11 out to the 36. Huge opportunity right there. That was uh, that could have been the difference in the game. We're down in the red zone and we come away and we punt it uh, with two lost plays in a row. Those are just things you can't do on the road against good football teams and lesson lesson learned. But you know, beyond all that, we still overcame it and took the lead and had opportunity to to win it. And then um, still had a penalty on the last drive that sort of set us back. And so we just we're not efficient enough right now to overcome those type of those type of penalties and those type of drops and and uh, and some execution things that we're lacking to beat good teams. Well, I think as long as you don't, you know, have a lot of them, um, you know, five-day turnarounds pretty quick, especially for kids that play 70 snaps. A middle linebacker just played 70 snaps and went in there and beat his body up. A five-day turnaround is pretty, pretty quick, but um, it, it's doable. You just don't want to live live in those. That's why I like the Tuesday ones better because you have nine days to get ready for the Tuesday, and then you have 13 days to get ready for the next game. Uh, the Tuesdays are much better on the kids, except for class miss. When you play on the road, you miss Monday, you play on Tuesday, you miss all day Tuesday, and then if you get in at 3 or 4 in the morning, yeah, you can say, hey, you better have your butt to class at 8 o'clock in the morning, but that's easier said than done. I don't know if that's fair to the student athletes also. The, the class time is, to me, the main, one of the main concerns also with the, with the midweek, midweek games. Well, we've, we've got to get the ball. You know, they, they did a great job up front. But, you know, we, we were really limited uh, with what we could do with some new guys in there. We played Jesse. We played Goodacre. Uh, and it was just tough sledding with some young pups in there. And uh, if it's going to be like that, we're going to have to move Elijah around maybe on the perimeter to get him the ball a little bit more. But the thing about it, on the perimeter, we got two pretty good slots in Gary Haynes and Al Rouse. And so to move him out there, you're taking a ball away from two really good inside slots that play the position all the time. And so, you know, you got to weigh that. Is it worth just putting him out there for one play? And when you put him out there just for one play, everybody knows it's coming to him. If you leave him out there all the time so they don't know it's coming to him, well, then you've taken off Al Rouse and Gary Haynes off the field to do that too. And so it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little easier said than done when trying to figure out how to get him the ball on perimeter. You put him out there and leave him out there all the time, but who are you going to have in the backfield carrying the ball? And then who are you going to take off the field at wide out? So we're still trying to find ways to move the ball. We are going to uh, tweak a couple things. And uh, as we continue to try to get our best uh, ways we feel like to score points, we are, I think we're averaging less than 20 points the last three games. I think we scored 18 points this game offensively. And, you know, that's just not enough in college football. That's just not. If we were averaging, we've averaged almost 35 points a game the last four years. If we were even just averaging 30 a game or 29 a game, we probably would be sitting here uh, six and four or six and three and uh, be a total different story. But averaging 18 points a game, you're, you're just not going to be a lot of people. People score points these days. And 18 points, that's, you're not going to get, get many of them doing that. Luckily, our defense has scored a couple of touchdowns for us. They're, they're sound on defense. They've got an active defensive line. I think they've got some good corners. Uh, the linebackers a tough physical run to the ball. And uh, they've, they've improved. Now, I think offensively, you know, they can put some points up. They've scored some points this year. And, and to win games, you got to score points. And that's the thing that's got us so stumped right now because we have been able to score points here uh, at the last four years. And just, you know, with the new, new quarterbacks and, and new offensive line, it just hadn't made it quite that easy. And we're, we're getting better. 
but it hadn't come quite as fast as we would have liked. But but um, we're going to get there. I have no no doubt about it. Well, one thing, you know, no, Eli didn't practice a snap last week. He sat out the whole week, didn't practice in order just to play on on Thursday night. And so, you know, he's probably not 100% uh, to be fair to him. He's not uh, at the level he would like to play at. And you can tell he's he's not the same right now. I'm hoping, though, with a little extra rest time now, uh, he can get closer to that again. And uh, because when he's 100%, you know, you don't have to block all 11 of them perfect, perfectly. He'll handle a couple on his own. But we hadn't ha had an opportunity to do that because probably of, of the, his health. But hopefully it's going to get better. Yeah, I mean, the guy, can he can hit a seam. Uh, he's, a, I think, a very strong runner, too. And he's got a burst. And uh, I just think he's a, an excellent running back. I mean, he's one of the best backs in the, in the conference right now. And um, so we're going to have some, you know, a challenge with these guys. They're a much improved team. And think about it, they've been got a little taste of, of winning. They got a little blood in the water. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, man, they're, on, you know, they're really feeling much better about themselves. Anytime you win, you do. And so uh, we're going to face a very fired up team when they come in here. We'll have to match that. But our team, I'll tell you this, they're, they're practicing their, their butts off. They're playing hard for us. And when you got a team that does that, I mean, you, you always have a chance. And that's why we know that we're just right around the edge from, from hopefully having a breakout game offensively where we can get in some rhythm and, and score some points like we've done in the past. Well, you know, it, it looked like it went pretty good early. We know the first drive of the game, it went like clockwork. We'd go down and score, and uh, you're thinking, wow, here we go. It looked pretty good. We threw the ball, and Jalen ran the ball, and we got down there in the red zone and finished it off. Um, but as the game wore, wore along, they started taking away the quarterback run game and making us hand it off every time uh, on the options. And uh, we didn't get enough push up front to really spring Eli. And that took Jalen out of some of his game. And they were forcing us to throw the ball. And they was giving us the pass. We was able to throw the ball pretty effectively against those guys. Even, you know, if we'd had some drops, it would have been way more. If it hadn't had the drops, it would have been way more effective. So. Um, it just got into a game where the passing game was just wide open, and so we stuck with that because it was working more. But I thought uh, at times it, it worked well. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.